uh, Minister, uh, Deputies, Guests, uh, I'd like to thank the Minister uh, for taking time out of his very uh, busy schedule uh, to be here today for the launch of these important guidelines. Uh, these guidelines are another major step in delivering uh, equal educational opportunities uh, for lesbians and gay men uh, in the Irish educational system. Of course, uh, these, the ministers here today, and, and it, it, I suppose it just shows again his long-term commitment to issues of progress for uh, lesbians and gay men in Ireland. And it goes back to the 80s, uh, if not earlier. Uh, the Minister, in fact, has been involved in all of the legal milestones uh, that have delivered progress for lesbians and gay men in this country. And when he was Minister uh, for Employment, and was just shortly in government in 1993, he introduced an amendment to the Unfair Dismissals Act uh, that made it illegal uh, to dismiss a person on the grounds of their sexual orientation. Indeed, it's a... Uh, it's amazing to recall that the, if you look back to that period, 1992-93, Ireland uh, in legal terms was one of the most reactionary countries in the world. But now, uh, with the Unfair Dismissals Act Amendment, with decriminalisation, with the equality legislation, and most recently uh, with the civil partnership legislation, we are now amongst the most progressive countries in the world uh, in terms of uh, the legal situation for lesbians and gay men in this country. And also the social and cultural status of lesbians, lesbians and gay men in this country has been transformed. And I think it's, uh, it's been transformed through, for example, uh, the Civil Partnership Act and the, the celebrations, the weddings, because uh, Chris Robson has told us he's investigated the matter and he's decided that you can call a civil partner celebration a wedding and who would disagree with Chris Robson? <laughs> um, and, and those celebrations, I don't know if you've been at them, they're, they're fantastic. They're, uh, you know, it's a new status and you would imagine that there might be a kind of a lead-in time until we got the kind of the parameters of it correct or how do you celebrate it. Uh, but I was at one recently and it just turned out to be just like a marriage wedding, including the band, the, the food, the grannies, the kids running around, and uh, the fields of Athenry. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are interesting uh, cross-cutting themes uh, here today, and just to quickly list them, there's the issue of education, there's the issue of equality, uh, there's the, the, the priority of economic recovery, of increasing our international economic competitiveness and of achieving value for money. Everyone agrees that the quality of our educational system and the skills and talents of our students and graduates is critical to our international economic competitiveness and to our economic <coughs> recovery and to our future prosperity. There has been some criticism that uh, our educational system at second level is not appro sufficiently appropriate to the demands of the new knowledge economy. And the Minister has taken steps in that regard so that we can meet these great challenges and opportunities of what is a rapidly developing and evolving and changing global economy. But we can see this important initiative here today as in terms of pro providing for uh, educational, equal educational opportunities as part of that project of delivering a world-class educational system on a par with or better than that of our competitor countries and that it can in fact give us a competitive edge in attracting foreign direct investment to the, this country, in generating jobs, and in generating innovation and entrepreneurship. I suppose here there's a, a general point uh, that progress in terms of equality and diversity in this country can drive our economy and can give us a competitive edge. We can say that our equality infrastructure, for example the Equality Authority, can be seen as part of our economic infrastructure. Indeed, Dublin City Council and Glen are carrying out such a study 
in, uh, which is funded by the Equality Authority uh, under the EU Progress Initiative. And just to give you, I suppose, a, a dramatic <coughs> case or example of uh, the negative links between diversity and equality and international competitiveness and our economy, uh, the attraction of international students to this country is a key part of our economic policy uh, and the Minister recently launched a major new initiative in, in that regard. However, Melbourne, which we would regard as a, a city that we should emulate and Australia as a country that we should emulate in terms of attracting international students, they, were very, they are very, very successful. Recently, they had a spate of racially motivated attacks on students from India. And given our YouTube and all that, the digital, uh, the, it spread around the world virally. So their reputation, and we all know in Ireland about uh, the damage to our reputation, the re damage to Australia and Melbourne's reputation as a place for international students, that damage was severe. In fact, the Indian Department of Foreign Affairs advised their students not to go uh, to Melbourne. So not ensuring an open, equality-based, diverse society and institutions is a serious risk factor uh, and, it <coughs> excuse me, and it can do considerable uh, reputational damage to a country. So just to conclude with the, um, the value for money one, which in a time of economic crisis is critical uh, for everyone, uh, there are two aspects to this in terms of what we're talking about today, I think, and generally, in fact. Uh, these guidelines uh, can save money because they can uh, prevent uh, costly problems from arising, for, exa for example, in terms of bullying and uh, either a case being taken uh, in terms of bullying or the, or the uh, social work and the psychological supports that the person might have to uh, avail of if, the, if there was a severe case of bullying. And the other aspect, I think, of value for money uh, that we're, we, we're talking about here today and that these guidelines can deliver is that they can significantly improve the educational outcomes, they can optimise the benefits of the public spending on education that we, are, we, that we are engaging in. So to conclude and, and just to hand over to Sandra who is our extremely effective uh, education director. Sandra. Um, we're particularly pleased that the Minister for Education and Skills is here today to launch the, the, these new guidelines and this is, I suppose, the first occasion that a Minister for Education will address the issues of supporting young lesbian and gay, bisexual and transgendered young people in schools. And it follows from the very um, welcome commitment in the programme for government to combating homophobic bullying. Um, Minister uh, Quinn's presence here today sends out a really strong message, not least to young LGBT people, themselves but that this issue is one to be taken seriously and the Minister has been very supportive of, of initiatives that address homophobic bullying over the last number of years um, both in his opposition spokesperson role in uh, education and as a member of the, the Joint Eroctus Committee um, on Education. So what are the issues? Well there is an increasing awareness and acceptance among, amongst the public, amongst educators, both teachers and principals amongst parents um, of the urgent need to address issues of homophobic bullying in schools and to provide recognition and support for young LGBT people um, in schools. The figures are stark. Recent research by the Children's Research Centre in Trinity found that the majority of young LGBT people had experienced homophobic bullying in schools. The research outlined the consequent impacts on their mental health and well-being a quarter had attempted suicide. One in five had missed school because they feared being bullied. And 5% had left school without com completing their leaving certificate. We know too from other research that four out of five teachers are aware of the prob problem of homophobic bullying. And nine out of 10 teachers say that a lack of policy in a school hinders them in tackling the issue effectively. 
homophobic bullying can significantly impact on both the educational and the life chances of young LGBT people. And if unchecked, it has, has an impact on all students who learn the high price of being different. There have been very significant developments in this area in the last few years. Um, many of you will have been here about 18 months ago when um, the launch of the first major guidelines uh, for schools on these issues, and these were jointly developed by the department and Glen, and they were endorsed by all of the education partners. These have been, since then, these have been augmented by guidelines produced by the National Centre for Guidance and Education and LEN, and those particular guidelines outline the role of guidance counsellors in supporting LGBT students. Similar guidelines have also been produced by the ASTI, TUI and LEN, which outline the role of teachers in recognising, affirming and supporting LGBT young people and in challenging homophobic behaviour in schools. The document being launched here today is a follow-up to the original guidelines and it came about um, from the work that we've been doing with the NAPD, with Belong To and um, the Equality Authority in a pilot training, a whole day uh, pilot training for schools on combating homophobic bullying. And it became clear that, that principals and other members of the school community were looking for detailed um, detailed, I suppose, explanation as to how you might bring about practical effect to the, the broad <laughs> guidelines in the original gui guideline documents. So we hope that, um, I suppose, that this, this resource here today will answer the questions that people have and will tell them specifically how to deal with um, issues that might arise in relation to relationships and sexuality education, for example, or a school code of behaviour and so on and so forth. There have been other initiatives, and I mentioned the, 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 um, the pilot <coughs> training with the NAPD, um, but perhaps the most notable recent initiative is uh, that by Belong to Youth Service, who are the National LGBT Youth Service, and who provide a, a broad range of, of both policy and practical um, supports to young people. Their recent campaign, Stand Up, um, addresses homophobic bullying in a way that encourages friendship and support of LGBT young people in schools and their viral video, Don't Stand for Homophobic Bullying, uh, had over a half a million people view it on YouTube and if you haven't seen it uh, so far I'd, I'd recommend a viewing of it. Uh, however, despite these developments, there is much further support and action is required if young people who are lesbian, gay or bisexual or transgendered or who are perceived to be, are to be protected from, hom from homophobic bullying in schools and if climates in schools are to be such as to provide equal opportunities for all. Today's launch provides an opportunity, an important opportunity, to move all of this work on, including the work, um, the very productive relationships between the department, the NGOs, and all of the education partners, to move them all to a new level. Today is a significant milestone towards a vision of safe and supportive schools that value diversity. Today comes out about because of the commitment of the NAPD and of Clive Byrne in particular in addressing the issues and I'd like to thank Clive and the NAPD very much for their, their really proactive engagement and support of these issues. It, it's just been um, absolutely remarkable. I would also like to thank very much the Central Policy Unit of the Department here and in particular Katrina O'Brien and Breda um, Nocton for their connection, sorry for their commitment to making schools safer places. And I, along with the other LGBT NGOs, really look forward to working with Clive, with the department, and with all the education partners to achieve <coughs> further progress in, in, into the future. I'd just like to pass over to Clive Byrne now. Um, to say follow that. Uh, Minister, it's great to have you here, and along with other representatives from the Oireachtas, um, deputies, and uh, Senator for joining us here today. And I want to particularly thank uh, Glenn for the opportunity that NAPD had to work with them. I'm not speaking to a prepared script, I just have brief speaking notes and they'll be by essence uh, in terms of people who know me, probably a little bit rambling but they'll come back but they'll have the benefit actually of being brief um, which uh, I'm sure everybody will, will, will note. But I know <clears throat> that basically uh, we live, as the Minister knows and I remember uh, in Irish society knows, in very very anxious times financially but certain initiatives don't have personnel or financial implications. 
and issues involving the relationship between Glen and NAPD and belong to an NAPD and the Equality Authority over the last few years and NAPD have been <coughs> driven by a combined interest in trying to improve the lot of all students in schools. And we feel that our work, even though we've been very much praised um, by, uh, by, by Glenn and belong to in the past, we see ourselves as being part of a movement to try and improve Irish society for the benefit of everyone. Um, there have been seismic shifts uh, over the last couple of weeks with the visit of Queen Elizabeth and with President Obama. Interspersed with all of those was the very, very sad death of Dr. Gareth Fitzgerald. Everybody that I've been speaking to has some memory of Garrett. I remember in my time in the 1970s, in a different time, that I was around and in his company and was in fact the person who told him that Dr. Tita Herrima had been released. And in those instances, we went into the car straight away down to the Dutch Embassy to pass on our congratulations um, on this successful outcome. But Garrett has permeated NAPD um, since, obviously, the foundation of it, given that he was the keynote address at our first conference and um, one of his last major educational conferences on the 27th of March was an NAPD symposium on further education. And I can absolutely say that his concept of civic republicanism is at the heart of what we strive to do in NAPD. And NAPD sees itself as an honest broker, because it isn't a management body, it isn't a teacher's union, it's a professional association representing school leaders in pushing the boundaries a little bit, because things don't have to be the same old in the same old. Sandra referred to school climate, and our view is that the school principal sets the climate for the school. But our view in NAPD is that NAPD, in a sense, sets the climate for the school leader. And as I said, we're trying to move that to a concept of civic republicanism, which is at the heart of our thinking. The involvement with Minister Hawhey a number of years ago at the launch of the original documentation supported by all of the education partners marked a milestone that generated a huge amount of very, very favorable publicity. But we didn't leave it at that. And working with Belong To and with Glenn and the Equality Authority, we've set up pilot projects, which Sandra referred to, which showed the need for more definitive um, guidance for school leaders. And it may surprise you to note, probably though not from me, that the second level school principal is one of the most legislated for individuals in Irish society, between education, employers, equality, health and safety, equal status, and all of those things. So a brief document highlighting the benefits of proofing policies we feel will be of major benefit to my colleagues in the school leaders as they are. But also, in our last edition of Executive Report this year, we will have a very, very fulsome tribute to Garrett uh, Fitzgerald for his work over the years in working towards education and an inclusive education for all. But they would also support Amnesty International on their 50th anniversary, the Young Social Innovators and their tremendous uh, work that they do for young people, the Yellow Flag Initiative celebrating diversity and difference, and the Primerica Spirit of Community Awards in Society, which NAPD co-sponsors. And also a very, very good article on the launch of the stand-up campaign uh, by, um, by uh, Deputy Hannigan, um, earlier on during the month of April. And we believe it is possible to change minds and hearts by our presence and our support of initiatives that don't oftentimes take um, person, personnel or financial considerations into account. So in the greater scheme of things and in the weeks that we have, these guidelines probably aren't earth-shattering. But a number of years ago, they probably would have been. And NAPD is quite proud of its role in working with the partners to ensure that something like the launch of these guidelines can take place in a calm, um, with the calm debate and in the context of everybody's wish to make Irish schools a safer place for children. Thank you very much. Um, I suppose one of the things that's always been clear to us is that alongside our work and that of belong to with the education partners and the department, a critical area or location where awareness and understanding of the issue uh, of homophobic bullying and support for young LGBT people in schools has been raised consistently is in the Oireachtas. 
and I'm delighted to see so many members of the Oireachtas here today and I really welcome their support and their continued support over a long time. And I'm really delighted to introduce um, Minister for Education, Uri Quinn, who has been one of those people who consistently raised and addressed these issues over, as Kieran said, let's not do the long, but over quite a while. But certainly, um, most clearly in the last Parliament when uh, Sandra and others were working to raise the issue of the guidelines and get achieve that breakthrough, his support was invaluable. So uh, without further ado, Minister Rory Quinn, thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, could I first of all uh, acknowledge my parliamentary colleagues, deputies, got to better get this alphabetically correct, uh, Hannigan, Humphreys and O'Reardon and Eric Byrne, who's just come in. Thank you, Eric. And I'd like to extend a special welcome to Senator Averill Power. You're no stranger to this complex of buildings. Uh, for those of you who don't know that Averill was a very influential advisor with former Minister Hannigan. Um, or not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and uh, I'd just like to, to, to acknowledge him. I also would like to acknowledge, and it's an indication of how we in the department, uh, if I may speak, use the royal re for people who are permanent and non temporary. Uh, Harold Heaslop, the Chief Inspector of our Schools Division, a uh, clear indication of, of how the department at Department level, and you've already said, Sandra, uh, the, the good support we've had over the years in relation to this. Ladies and gentlemen, the recent programme for government states, we will encourage, and I quote, we will encourage schools to develop anti-bullying policies and in particular strategies to combat homophobic bullying to support students, end of quote. Within that context, I'm very pleased to have been invited by Glenn to you to speak to you today to perform the official launch of including lesbian, gay and bisexual students in school policies, guidelines for principals. This new resource represents the culmination of a lot of hard work by all concerned and I hope that it will, it will prove of practical assistance to those who use it. The guidelines are designed to complement previous guidance resource for school principals and guidance counsellors and are the result of a collaborative undertaking between Glenn and the National Association of Principals and Deputy Principals, represented very ably here by Clive Byrne, and with the cooperation of the Department of Education and Skills. I would like to specifically mention Sandra Gowan, Director of Education Policy with Glenn and Clive Byrne, Director of the NAPD, for their hard work and commitment in bringing the resource to reality. The development of these guidelines highlights the, necess the necessity for schools, parents, and the wider community to tackle bullying, peer aggression, and violence directed at young people based on their sexual orientation. In the case of homophobic bullying, young people are targeted either individually or collectively. These young people are already part of a minority in society and are often experiencing a complex array of challenges in their young lives. These young people may already be experiencing isolation, fear, marginalization, and lack of acceptance from their peers and others as a result of their own sexuality. And that's on top of becoming a teenager or grown up as well. So it's a, it's a pretty heavy load for people to bear. It is therefore particularly important that we equip our principals and school leaders to be able to deal with the many challenges surrounding the inclusion of lesbian, gay and bisexual students in our schools. The need to tackle homophobic bullying is welcome and I'm welcome in, the, in welcoming these guidelines. I also want to take this opportunity to identify some of the steps that have been and will be taken in the coming years to help combat homophobic bullying in our schools. The newly appointed Senator, Catherine Zappone, once wrote about her teenage years, and I quote, I don't think anyone would have noticed my veiled confusion. I loved sport, speech, music, and everything to do with school. I stood out. I was a leader. But I didn't talk about everything. Not even to my best friend. Not even to myself. Our teenage years are troubling, difficult years for all of us. That quote describes the added confusion and isolation which young LGBT people must endure. Adding homophobic bullying to this mix creates devastating consequences. Some of the research which has been carried out in this area helps underline the urgency of making progress in this area. DCU research has found that 80% of teachers were aware of homophobic bullying in their schools. Research commissioned by Glenn and belong to youth services has found that 50% of LGBT young people have experienced verbal homophobic bullying, but over a third have heard homophobic comments from their teachers, from their teachers. 
And the most worrying of all, the same research has found that half of, the, of our LGBT, um, LGBT young people have seriously thought of ending their lives. I mean, that, that just is, to me, scary. Uh, and I think we have to, to really digest and absorb the findings of this scientific research. There is a direct correlation between homophobic bullying, mental health difficulties, and su suicidal behavior amongst LGBT young people. That is the fact that we must hold forefront in our minds as we embark on this discussion. In 1993, the Department of Education issued guidelines on countering bullying behavior as an aid to schools in devising measures to prevent and deal with instances of bullying behavior. Those guidelines were drawn up following consultation with representatives of school management, teachers, and parents, and are sufficiently flexible to allow each school authority to adapt them to suit <coughs> the particular needs of their school. I will be asking my department to re-examine these guidelines to ensure currency of content. For instance, they should reflect issues such as homophobic bullying, cyberbullying, and even text bullying. Under the Education Welfare Act of 2000, all schools are required to have in place a code of behaviour, and this code must be drawn up in accordance with the guidelines of the National Education Welfare Board. The NEWB guidelines were issued to schools in 2008. As a result, every school must have, a place in, have in place a policy which ex includes specific measures to deal with bullying behaviour and within the framework of the school's overall code of behaviour. Similarly, similarly to the guidelines issued by my department, it is important that the NEWB also ensure the content of their guidelines, that that content is kept current and explicitly refer to areas such as homophobic bullying. <coughs> the NEBW is, the NEWB I should say, is in the process of being transferred to the new Department of Children and Youth Affairs and I will be emphasising to Minister Fitzgerald my views on the need to update these guidelines. I would hope that the NEWB will continue to play a positive role in education and from within the department. The SPHE Support Services has worked with Belong to belong to on the design of a training day for teachers on sexual orientation and homophobia. More recently, the SPHE Support Service initiated a collaborative project with Belong to and Glen to develop a teaching resource consisting of a DVD and lesson materials on the experience of growing up as a young lesbian, gay, bisexual or transgender young person. It would be ready in early 2012 and will be accompanied by a program of teacher training. Guidelines, codes of conduct, modern curricula and training for principals, school leaders and teachers will continue to play an important role in our approach to combating homophobic bullying, but we can and we must do more. One proposal which I'm currently considering is the establishment of a working group comprising all the relevant sections of my department along with the NGOs involved in this area and the education partners including the management bodies and the unions to help draft a roadmap towards the elimination, the elimination of homophobic bullying from our schools. We should make it just totally unacceptable in terms of standard social behaviour that any kind of tolerance is simply not enough. We simply have to just get it out of the system altogether and be quite intolerant in, 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 in our detestation of it. In addition, I would also like to mention the very important work being done for young people in schools by Belong to Youth Services. I would like to pay tribute to them for the vital contribution that they make to the lives of young LGBT people. Their most recent campaign, Stand Up, and we've heard reference to this already, Stand Up provides a focus for promoting positive awareness of LGBT young people, tackling homophobia and homophobic bullying, and building allies among young people and teachers. Finally, turning to the role of government, the recently agreed program for national government includes some commitments which I think are particularly relevant to this area. This government has committed to holding a referendum on children's rights, and we will do so as, as soon as practically possible. For anyone concerned with bullying or the rights of children, this is the key first step to adequately protecting our children. Once this has been achieved, a range of options will become available to us, including the investigation of the use of statutory or legislative provisions 
to work towards removing the threat of bullying from all of our children. Other provisions, such as the commitment to enact gender recognition legislation and our proposal to refer the introduction of same-sex marriage to a constitutional convention, will be of interest to anyone involved in campaigning for LGBT rights. The Programme for Government also states that LGBT people should not be deterred from training or taking up employment as teachers in the state. Visibility of LGBT adults is essential to building accepting environments within which LGBT young people can come to terms with their own personal identities. Progressing these areas would engender a new atmosphere of tolerance and acceptance in our society, something which Kieran referred to and which has an international dimension to it as well. For too long, gay people were criminalised in Ireland. Criminalised, it's hard to comprehend it now, but that was the case. For too long, their relationships received no recognition from the state. And for too long, we have allowed homophobic bullying to be a feature of our education system. Young gay men and women must be allowed to come to terms with their own identities and sexualities without fear or hostility or even violence. We should support all of our young people to be at ease with themselves and with others, regardless of difference. Bullying of all forms, and targeted bullying in particular of young LGBT people in particular, should receive no welcome in our schools and our societies. And I'm greatly heartened by what I heard Clive Byrne say when he addressed us. Let me conclude, therefore. As I have said above, we can and must do more in this area. I would like to confirm the continuing support of the Department of Education and Skills to this important agenda, and I look forward to continued collaboration with Glenn and the other education partners in this area. Thank you all very much. Indeed. Just to conclude by saying, um, Minister, to thank you very much. They were very, it's very heartening actually to hear that the Minister of Education say those things, say those things to young LGBT people who would hear the message that it will not be tolerated anymore, um, that tolerance isn't enough, that elimination of homophobic bullying is what is going to happen and is required. And, and I, I, mean, I don't want to speak for all the gays in the world, but I, I certainly would delight it to say that I, I know that will give great hope to very many people, and I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. And, and I suppose the, uh, you, your suggestion of a working group is one that I think we would very strongly welcome. and. and uh, along with belong to uh, and ourselves and other NGOs would be delighted to work with to look forward developing a roadmap towards as you put it the elimination of homophobic bullying but just to finish on that minister to say thank you very much uh, it's been incredibly heartening and you've charted a roadmap for progress that I think we're thrilled with and delighted with and we look forward to working with you and the department over the next very short space of time to as you say eliminate homophobic bullying thank you very much minister.